Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of Books Up Close. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Chris Lloyd, I'm a lecturer in English Literature in the UK and I bring you reviews of books that I'm reading and thinking about. So today I'm going to be reviewing Ling Ma's Severance, which came out in 2018. I know, I'm behind the curve, don't at me. I have to read a lot for my job, so I don't always get on top of the books that I want to. Uh, but I finally read it recently, stormed through it. It's a really, really good read, as I'm sure you already know that you've probably read it. So if you haven't read it, the book follows Candice Chen, who is a young Asian American woman who lives in New York and she works for a publishing company. And her job in particular is to oversee the production of Bibles. And so she works with companies, particularly in China, who produce these Bibles in different specifications for different people. The book is told in two parts, so there's interspliced chapters. And one of those threads is the contemporary moment where Candice is living in this kind of post-apocalyptic world leaving New York with a bunch of other people. And then the other strand is her in the past, we get these kind of flashbacks. So what we learn about the apocalypse is that a virus has taken over that's called Shen fever. And it's suggested that it kind of started in Shenzhen in China. Now this virus is a fungal one, so it kind of replicates in spores in the air. And what it does before it kills you is it kind of traps you in a repetitive loop of a particular activity that you did in life. So people end up just doing one thing over and over and over again as, as they slowly die. So the book kind of traffics in lots of the kind of apocalyptic tropes. It's kind of like a zombie narrative, although it kind of does lots of things against the zombie narrative. Um, and there are explicit kind of conversations by the characters in it that this isn't a zombie apocalypse although they do end up at a mall, um, which is a kind of reference to the Romero films and so on. But obviously it's engaging with certain tropes of undeadness, of repetition. It kind of joins other kind of anti-zombie novels in that regard, like Colson Whitehead Zone One, for example, or even uh, Bennett Sims' A Questionable Shape. And Mart is really good at interspersing the kind of the everyday kind of previous world with this new apocalyptic one and the people on the run. What we learn as the kind of book goes on is that Candace ends up staying in New York right up until the end. So even while the city is kind of evacuated, people are slowly dying to this um, fever. She stays and carries on doing her job. And at one point she's the only person in the entire kind of skyscraper doing her job. And there are kind of insinuations there that like her repetitions are maybe a kind of corollary to what the fever does to people. And I thought the book was gonna take a different turn there, but I won't say too much because I don't wanna <laughs> ruin anything if you haven't read it. Um, but there is obviously a kind of conversation in the book about capital, right? And about the kind of repetitions of capitalism, of work, of labor, and so on that I think is quite interesting. But the other more kind of pressing part of the book is that it thinks about the racialization of viruses of illnesses and the way that society narrativizes them. So Shen fever becomes associated with Asian-ness and with China in particular, which obviously opens up comparisons to the SARS virus, which clearly was a kind of precursor to this book, as well as now our own current pandemic reality. So obviously the title of the novel itself, Severance, kind of calls up different kinds of things, one being kind of, you know, severance from a workplace. So again, work being at the heart of what the book is thinking through, but also severance from other things, from a previous life, from other ways of doing things. Um, there are so many people severed in this book from kind of alternative worlds or worlds that used to exist that no longer do. And what Candice does is she's living in New York. She has a kind of blog, an anonymous blog called NY Ghost. And she keeps this up right until the end, taking photos of the city in its kind of destruction. Um, so kind of empty streets, empty parking lots, buildings, and so on. In a way to kind of reach out to people that are still alive in this um, post-catastrophe world and maybe kind of help them cling on to a sense of life as it was or previous versions of home and longing and nostalgia. There's a great essay on 
this um, on the website Post45. There's a cluster of essays by amazing scholars on the book. And one of them is by Alex Beeston, who talks about the use of images in this novel in particular, one of the reference points being the kind of disintegration of somewhere like Detroit, right, in the US, and the way in which certain iconography of ruin has been dominant in that imaginary of the city. So there are really famous photographs of kind of abandoned theatres and buildings um, as the city has crumbled over time. So the book really is thinking about the decline of America and even maybe American empire, but also the decline of capital and of the work that we do as humans to uphold the logic of capital, right? So this book is firing on all cylinders. It's doing multiple things at once. It's a zombie novel. It's a contagion novel. It's an immigrant novel. It's a transnational novel. It does so many different things at once and it's really, really good. The writing is so easy to read. You kind of flow through it. There are a couple of overly tortuous moments that I don't think need to be there prose wise, but on the whole, it's really, really cleanly written. Um, the ending, I'm not fully sold on. I was expecting something else. I wanted something else. I felt a little bit let down. And for that reason, I'm only giving this book four stars. It would get five if the novel had done something else at the end, but I felt a little bit let down. So I really want to hear if you feel the same or if you liked it, if I'm missing something. Um, but it's a really great read. I suggest you all read it if you haven't. I know you might not want to read a pandemic book during a pandemic, but actually it was quite cathartic in a way to kind of have the idea of, you know, end times written in such a brilliant way and such a thoughtful way. But please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video and the book. Uh, please like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe if you already haven't and ring the bell for notifications. Until the next time, keep well, stay healthy, look after each other and keep reading and see you soon.